Well, hello again, everyone. This is Clint Finney for another Eastern Ohio Grazing Council web presentation for July the 9th, 2020. This week, we're going to talk with you about some extra forage options for here in our summer. Uh, we've been experiencing some dry weather as of late and also some very hot weather here in Eastern Ohio. And uh, it shows because we've got some questions and comments about what are our options uh, for producing forage or extra forage for this sort of a weather pattern. So let's get started. I rarely ever put a slide in kind of outlining what we're going to talk about, but uh, today, in order to keep my thoughts in order, I had to kind of put together a list of, of all of the things and all the options, and we're going to talk some more about them as we go, but kind of our options are uh, combining the herds together. If we've got multiple herds, combining some together, leaving more residue or leaving enough residue, calling some of the unproductive animals, fertilizing our existing pasture fields a little bit, maybe if we're not fertilizing them already. Planting some summer annuals for more forage, planting some winter annuals uh, for fall and winter forage, and uh, always, you know, feeding hay is an option. So we're going to talk about those more in depth as we go along. Um, just wanted to note out that we're going to talk at, at this too, that if it doesn't rain, it doesn't matter much. A lot of our options are based on uh, having a little bit of rain to be able to make things work. So if we get some, it will help. But if we, uh, our last option is probably going to be the option we're going to be at. But uh, rains are spotty. Uh, I'm recording this here on a, uh, Wednesday. We got a little bit of rain last night. Got maybe a little bit more coming in today and got some more coming Saturday. Uh, but I want to preface uh, most of all that we're going to talk about with if it doesn't rain, it doesn't matter much. Kind of put the grazing management topics all together and uh, combining our herds together may, may be an, an alien idea for some of us. Um, but if we've got multiple herds, if we've got a group of heifers and a group of, of cows or a group of steers and a group of cows, or in my case, you know, I've got sheep and I've got cows. If we're short on forage and, and things aren't regrowing as fast as we would like, one of the best things that we can do is combine those herds together. Uh, I always say if we can keep them separated mentally, there's no reason in kept keeping them separated physically. And I have folks that, that balk at that and say, well, my, my heifers need better feed or my steers need better feed or, or the cows don't need as good a feed. And, and I get that. But if we're in a situation where uh, we're not producing enough forage for any of them, then we better put them all together and, and take, what, take what we get and take what we've got out there as far as forage goes. Uh, the one silver lining to, to a dry period or a hot time is uh, what forage we do have and what forage does grow, regrow, is going to be better quality stuff. So we don't have those quality kind of concerns. And and, and I'll always maintain, you know, we, we keep our heifers separate from our cows. And uh, sometimes that's not a good idea. And sometimes it's not such a good idea because we want that heifer to be able to grow in the same environment that she's going to have to live in to have the calf later. So I'm always a proponent of combining herds if we can, but this is a time when we really need to. We've talked all the time about leaving enough residue, leaving enough soil cover, and, and when things get dry, things get hot. That's when those those topics really shine too, because we're leaving enough grass there to, to catch some solar energy, but also to shade the soil and help keep moisture in the ground. So uh, if there's ever a time when we wanna leave uh, a, more of a residue these dry and hot times uh, are those times and then after that you know a lot of most of us have finished up calving we're right in the thick of calving uh, but this is the time to call those unproductive animals and, and get them out of the herd and, and get them off of our feed budget at this point um, if we've got one that maybe we're holding on to well let's give her another year Th this may be the year that we need to say you know, we don't we, we don't want to hold them on to them another year. We, we don't want to see whether she's going to take us to the bank again next year or not. Uh, we may want to go ahead and pull the plug and let some of those unproductive animals go on down the road. We'll talk a second about fertility or fertilizer options. Um, you know, putting a, a shot of fertilizer out there in a pasture field, it surely is going to give it a boost. 
Uh, but there again, if it doesn't rain, it doesn't matter. Most of our fertility options are going to require having an amount of rain to help wash that into the soil. Uh, I, I've got on here on the slide, don't overlook, you know, manures, composts, those kinds of things. But even them, I, I drive by a field every day that had manure spread heavy on it about a month ago. And it really hadn't had a really good rain on it yet. And, and it hasn't increased the growth at all because it hasn't had a chance to wash that manure off the, the leaf surface. And, and being black manure, it's, it's really heating that area up more than it would be cooling it down. Once it gets a good rain on it, it'll, it'll clear up. But um, we can think about putting some nitrogen out there in the field and uh, that'll give things a boost. If we're low on fertility in general, then we probably ought to put a, a good balance fertilizer out there and, and each situation is different so I don't want to get too far in specifics of how much or what fertilizers you should put out there uh, but this is a time when if if we're going to get some rain and we can get some fertilizer spread when we haven't been uh, this is a time where we may think about doing that just to give our pastures a boost. We can also plant some summer annuals um, we're getting about to the end of the window planting summer annuals here and just after that window closes, uh, we start looking at winter annuals, and we'll talk about that in the next slide. But about July 15th is, is about to come time for planting in summer annual, mostly because the summer annuals are, are not frost tolerant. They will frost out, and we want to get those planted so they've got 45, 50, 60 days before they're going to get that killing frost and going to die out on us anyway. We want to give them a chance to produce some tonnage out there in the field and actually give us something, uh, some return on our investment. But, you know, we can go out, we can mow a field for hay, we can clip a pasture, we can graze a pasture, and then go ahead and see the summer annual in that, in that area. Uh, in some instances, we can broadcast the seed on a, on a pasture field before a, a heavy grazing event, meaning we may graze it down a little bit harder. Um, I'd be careful doing that right now with, with things being as dry as they are, because if we're going to graze it heavy, uh, at least if we have forage out there in the field, you know, we, we want to keep that as much as we can. If we graze that field really hard, we've now set that forage back and, and we're hoping the seeding is going to take, but it may not, depending on what the rain is going to do. So just be very careful about that. You know, there are other options out there, you know, in, in years past, we We've seen some guys use a light application of glyphosate to kind of set the pasture back just a little bit and plant summer annuals. Uh, that That is an option. There again, I'd, I'd be careful and be cautious about doing that because if you do have forage growing out there, that's better than no forage. And if we don't get any rain at all and we set it back, then it's it's not going to come back for us either. So, um, <clears throat> but then then we can we can seed those summer annuals right in the existing sod. We can do it with a, with a drill. Um, you can do it with a no-till drill, of course. Uh, Dennis Brown talked at our winter meeting about even using a conventional drill. If it's got press wheels, uh, you can go through an existing sod field, existing pasture field, and still do a pretty good job of interseeding some of these annuals in because most of them don't need to be seeded very deep. Usually a quarter of an inch is going to be good enough. And, and then, of course, we're going to need some rain, you know, to be able to get that seed to sprout and go and and not only just that rain, but we need successive rains there afterward because we could have a situation where the seed goes ahead and sprouts, but then dies for lack of second because it doesn't get another rain to keep it on going. But uh, some of the summer annuals we can consider by all means, this is a, a, a non all inclusive list, but sorghum sedans, probably the favorite. That's what we hear the most about. We've seen some guys plant pearl millet and rapeseed and turnips and radishes, and buckwheat and soybeans. And even grazing corn as a summer annual out there for, for some extra forage when we get to a hot and, and drier time of the year. Uh, one word of caution, and you know I, we hate to talk about poisonings, but uh, be careful with those summer annuals, especially sorghum sedan, because we can see prussic acid poisoning uh, just much the same way we would see with, with cherry, you know, in a storm event. It's, it's only at the wilt stage that it's really dangerous. At any other time, it's okay. Um, the guys that, that graze sorghum sedan grass say they really don't have any trouble with it. It's not something to really be concerned about. It's just something that we need to worry about at that frost. And once the, that sorghum sedan frosts, we want to kind of stay off of it for two weeks or so 
to make sure that it goes ahead and gets back right. And then it can go ahead and be grazed again after that. If you need any seeding advice, by all means, you're welcome to call in here. We can talk with you about seeding rates. Uh, you can look up the Ohio NRCS Appendix A online. Uh, that'll give you an idea. And, and, and certainly also don't be afraid of putting together some sort of mix. Some sort of mix that has a grass and a legume and a forb all in it um, so that it, those, those feeds kind of all work together to produce a, a forage crop. Be careful about how much you spend on seed. You know, we're looking at, you know, we hope to get a ton or two ton of extra forage out of those fields. And if you go spending too much seed on or too much on seed and, and too much on drilling it in, uh, it, at that point, maybe we've been better off just to buy some hay and feed some hay. As I said, we're, we're getting about to the end of the summer annual window and that winter annual window kind of opens up their mid-July, 1st of August, mid-August, uh, where we're going to, where we can start talking about planting the winter annual things. So, um, much the same way that we just talked about summer annuals. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time, but, uh, we can seed it much the same way. We can graze it a little bit harder, broadcast it out ahead of the cows, let them kind of tread it in. We can use a drill. Um, either conventional or no-till drill. Again, those seeds don't have to be in the ground very hard. Again, it really depends on rain. We've got to have rain to get that seed to go ahead and sprout. There's there's no um, magic elixir that we're going to put out there that's going to get those plants to grow if we don't have any rain. But in winter annual uh, options, winter wheat, cereal rye, oats, hairy vetch, Austrian winter pea, again, turnips and radishes. Uh, there's others out there. The thing with winter annuals for me is uh, summer annuals are easy because we know the frost is going to kill them out. If we plant winter wheat or cereal rye, uh, it's not going to die out in the frost. It's going to go through the winter and come back in the spring. And we just need to know that it's going to do that and, and be cautious about it becoming a weed when it goes to seed there next summer. Uh, we've got to make sure we get it grazed off so that it doesn't produce seed if, if we can help it. Uh, things like oats, they'll frost out, so they're not going to live through the next year. Uh, so it, it all depends on your goals and what you're trying to do. Uh, I like to do a little bit of both. I like some cereal rye because it gives me something early to get on in the spring. Uh, but oats is good, too, because it frosts out. I don't have to worry about what it's going to do for us in the spring. Um, and, and also with those winter annuals, we got to be careful about when we seed them and what we do with them because if we seed them too early, they could possibly go to seed um, this yet yeah, this fall, depending on how the weather goes. Again, seeding tables are available online. We'll be glad to talk with you there too if you want to call in and uh, we'll talk with you about seeding rate, but also depth um, at planting time to make sure we get a good chance at getting a good seeding out there in the field. I wanted to throw in some quick words of caution. Uh, we're talking about seeding and fertilizing and all those things, but, and I know I've talked about this before, but uh, if it doesn't rain, it, it doesn't matter. Um, we, we have to be willing to accept the risk if we're going to put fertilizer out or if we're going to plant uh, any kind of forage, be it a summer annual or a winter annual, we have to be willing to accept that risk that we're not going to get enough rain to get it to, to go ahead and grow and, and really give us anything. And we're going to be talking about feeding hay here in the next slide which is pretty much the only option we've got if it doesn't rain. But uh, one, one word of caution. The other is uh, seeding depths make a huge difference in, in these times when it's dry. Uh, I know we've talked about going out there and broadcasting seed ahead of cows, and we've done that at pasture walks and talked about it. I'm not so sure that this year is going to be the year that's going to work out well for that. Uh, we've done that in the last two years when we've had particularly wet years, uh, but this year I'm not so sure that the broadcast seeding of any kind or in front of the livestock is going to have a whole lot of a success rate. And then the other thing is, you know, if you're planting uh, summer annuals or winter annuals, either one, inside of uh, an existing forage stand, you have to realize that that existing forage stand is going to compete with it. And if we get a bunch of rain and things go back to normal, you may not find a whole lot of any of that stuff actually grows. And and sometimes that's okay, sometimes it's not. I, I planted a bunch of winter wheat and turnips and things a couple years ago, and then we got a bunch of rain and, and the, 
the perennial forages took over and I didn't see a whole lot of any of it. And I considered that just, just insurance money. I paid that out just to make sure that we were going to have something that grew in the winter and, and it didn't. And that was fine. So, uh, just some words of caution about, uh, doing different things, uh, both spreading fertilizer, planting seed. Uh, if it doesn't rain, it doesn't matter. And we need to make sure we get those seeding depths correct. And, and, and we need to be aware that, that those forages in existing sods are going to have to compete with those existing forages. If we continue on this dry and, and hot pattern, I, I want folks to know that it, it's not the end of the world if we have to pull some animals in and feed hay. Yes, we're a grazing organization. We talk about grazing green grass, but uh, one of the best things that we can do if we run out of forage is go ahead and feed some hay. Uh, because we're saving those pastures for later. It, it's going to rain again. It's going to rain enough again. Uh, it's going to get cooler again. And if we save those pastures, and make sure we don't overgraze them and we go ahead and feed some hay, we'll have some forage later on in the year. If we go ahead and overgraze those pastures at this point, we may not get anything in, in the fall or in the winter to be able to graze. So uh, feeding hay isn't the end of the world. In fact, if I have a choice between feeding hay in the summer when it's dry and hot and feeding hay in the winter, I'll take summer every time uh, because uh, it's dry. I can feed hay anywhere. I can unroll bales anywhere, even places that are historically wet. I can go out and unroll bales. So uh, not the end of the world. If we have to feed some hay, it'll come back to us. We'll get some forage later. We'll be able to graze later. So if you're in one of those situations where we, we can't get warm season annuals planted, we can't it's not going to be late enough yet to get winter annuals. Um, maybe feeding hay isn't isn't the best, worst option in the world. Uh, go ahead and feed it now, get it over with, and, and hope for a better time in the fall with some more forage. Well, that's a wrap for this week's web presentation. Uh, we'll end, as always, by thanking our sponsors and thanking all of you for tuning in. Uh, hopefully, I, I don't mean to scare any of you with these presentation, well, this presentation especially. I, I don't have a crystal ball. I have no idea what this weather pattern is going to do. I don't know where it's going to go. I purposely stayed away from, from mentioning the D word. I don't want to talk about that just yet. Uh, and I hope that we put this presentation out here and, and it's all for naught. We get some rain and things keep growing and we don't have to worry about it. But one of our goals in doing these presentations is to stay on the cutting edge of things that, that producers really need. It doesn't do us any good to be talking about seeding summer annuals two weeks from now when it's too late to be planting them. So we want to go ahead and get this information out there to all of you and give you some options of things to do if we continue on this pattern that we currently have. So with that, say, see you next time.